Let's see our one question. Sigmund asks, "What are your thoughts on studio monitors for cinema surround?" Watch a great wow. video from Oh yeah, CLD, CLD. today. Uh, showing his Atmos mixing for music with Genelic Genelic seven four one seven one. Genelic's pretty high end. Genelic, yeah. They're expensive. Well, they have they have some budget level stuff too. So they, it's, it's all. I don't know about budget. Question. What do you what do you what, yeah. your budget? Your Genelic, level of budget Genelic's pretty expensive, dude. I mean, you can buy some monitors for five hundred <laughs> each, so it's a thousand for a pair. Yeah. I mean, that's budget they level. Yeah, that's budget them. level. Right. You know, you're talking studio monitors. You know, I've seen a pair really of expensive Gen Yeah, though. yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Um, I was at Nam in 2020 mm-hmm. before this whole COVID thing blew blew things up, and you should have seen the giant like. <laughs> Gen, they had a gen, Genelic 7.1.4 mixing mm-hmm. uh, thing, and people were just sitting there listening, but the mains were like huge. I was like, damn. So those weird coaxial ones that you can't even see the drivers. It's just this like big gray slot on the side. Yeah, yeah. So typically those are, I'm assuming those are powered speakers, I believe, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So to me, that's, I've, I know people that have used powered speakers in their system, but that just seems a little weird for me. Because number one, you got to have power to them, to every speaker. If you're doing like a, even a 5.1 or 7.1 setup, typically you want your surrounds at least at your level or a little bit above. So now you got a cable going down the wall. So I don't know. To me, yeah, it's harder things. to it's things. harder to set that up. Um, and then you got to figure out like, okay, how do you? How does that work with? Like your AVR, well, I guess if all of them it, are active, it, yeah. then that's one thing. But what if you got like LCRs that are passive? Nah, you you if you were gonna no. go this route, it, it, so they everything's would all, gonna be. Yeah. Okay. You're just gonna have. You're just going to have to prepare for have yeah. for two cables to go to each speaker. Yeah. <clears throat> right. One's gonna power, be your. Right? Excuse me. Yeah. One's gonna, gonna be your power. One's gonna be your and power. you also gotta have a, a like your pre out from your. Yes. Processor yeah. From or, the so so my cousin did this right. He had a Marantz. Pre Pro, and he used Mm -hmm. his Atom X7 monitors as the left and right. And he's like, I really hate this. (laughs) This is like, it does not sound good. He's like, they look, they sound so much better in my studio. Mm -hmm. Now, what Sigmund's talking about is someone's Atmos mixing studio. But if you, once you, once you get Mm -hmm. out of the studio space, because all these things you guys got to remember are all near field, right? These are all meant for two to three feet away. Mm -hmm. So when you've got like me, like me, right, Joe? How many mm-hmm. feet away? 14 uh, foot. 14 my front stage is 14 feet away. Yeah, that's not going to work. A pair of near, near field speakers for the front stage, not going to do it. Yeah. Not going to do it. So I know a lot of people think about it because if you if you do think about it, if the speakers that have an internal amplifier, great. Great. You don't have to buy an external amp for your AV receiver. That that speaker itself is putting out whatever, let's yeah. say 500 watts, you know, for, for both components. So in theory that sounds great for a music like uh mixing room great Mm -hmm. but for like your home yeah probably not let's see yeah i think he's talking about this video here from tld you see it oh yeah if you guys are seeing that yeah yeah, Yeah, boom yeah look at those things yeah so he's kind of in a like he said it's a small studio so more than like a living room setup Right, and you see, is pretty much like equidistant <clears throat> from every yeah. speaker. Yeah, so yeah, one person, two person. <laughs> it's, like, it's like me in this room here. Right. Um, yeah, not a six. The question again. Theater room. Where's the question? It was again? starred. No, it was starred. That was okay. Here we go. Sigmund Judge. Mm-hmm. I just ah. want to see if we address. It. Uh, what are you? you th- okay, so for cinema surround, so I think he's talking Shana about basically said everything. you just have to consider that oh, you will no, need. For- You'll need an extra power cable for every speaker, right? And then the other thing just being you're probably going to want a preamp that has XLRs because mm-hmm. if the speakers are far, you yeah, know, yeah, RCAs are kind of susceptible. What's that? The Gentle X even offer that? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah, usually yeah. a multi-jack on the back of studio okay. monitors. It's a TRS yeah. and – oh, it's actually, yeah. majority of them don't have RCAs, actually. Yeah. Okay. So right. for longer runs, longer runs, it needs to be, you know, a balanced um, yeah. signal to. So you know, an AVR any noise probably isn't going to work for that. You're going to need a dedicated processor. Mm-hmm. But so real quick about Genelec specifically, the thing I like about them is they are very well engineered. So measurements, all that, you're going to get all that when you buy Genelec. You know that it's not just like they're not just charging because they <laughs> feel like charging a lot. Like 
the measurements speak Excuse for themselves. Me. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, they, I think that's a good way to go. I think that if you wanted to do something similar without buying Genelec, maybe a less mm -hmm. expensive way, is I've seen those, what is it, the Emotiva MC1 for $9.99. I think that has balanced, RC, uh, balanced XLR, right? Maybe? Okay. So anyway, th there's these less the expensive. Model? Uh, Emotiva MC1. The less expensive yeah, pre-pros. Yeah, it's like a, it's oh, a budget pre-pro. Pre yeah. Yeah, so you can get something like that and then get some Cali Audio, which are on sale, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, for Prime Day. There you go, I Prime Day. It was at 169 bucks each speaker. Dude, you know, so you know what's funny? I've been looking at those things. They, they're not on sale for Prime Day. They've just been on a sale for a while. Oh, they've just been on sale. <laughs> yeah, okay, they're just on sale. I was like, oh, um, I might buy those. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this is the MC1. Yeah. That Let's see the back. About. Oh, oh no, oh, those are RCA. Yeah, because it's, those a, other it's ones a budget then. friendly. Yeah, you'd need like yeah. the, uh, what is How that? How about that tone winner the and the other one? RMC1. Um, tone, tone winner, winner I think, yeah. does have the XLRs. What is that other one that uh, that our buddy? Iota. Oh, the Iota. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that one might be XLR. So, but those are twice as much, but still yeah. less expensive than what we're used to. Sure. Uh, 2000 bucks. But anyway, I think the good thing about using studio monitors, though, is they're meant to be accurate. So at least you know if you're not going to do any DSP, at least you know that you know from the for the higher frequencies you're getting a accurate sound when you're going with something like a Genelec or these Cali audios. Mm -hmm. They've been measured, they're accurate. Now it's just a matter of getting your bass sounding good. In which case you'll still probably need a mini DSP and some decent subs. So I think it's a and I'm assuming you a mean a seven point one point four. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So four at most, one subwoofer. Yeah. He said, thank you so much for answering my question. Definitely hadn't thought about my sound stage and the difference. Just trying to have some something that would work for creation and consumption. Yeah. Uh, it it that that's tough. That's just gonna be based on your space. You know, I think I think your space would dictate, you know, near field monitors or standard home theater speakers or whatever. Well, the smart thing about that setup though is if you go with a pre pro, typically you need to get power amplifiers, right? Yeah. Well, these they're already, already in there. Have, yeah, they're yeah. amplified. Each one is amplified, so it's not the a space, terrible the idea. Space is limited. You know, you don't have yeah. room for the amps. Yeah, and then your subs. The subs have built-in amps, mm -hmm. so it's just kind of more distributed, right? Right. So instead of everything going to a power amp, the power amps are on each speaker. Are around the room. Yeah, yeah they're around all around you. Amplify. All around, all around. All around. After every Monday podcast, we have an after show. If you're interested in joining us, go to patreon.com forward slash daily high five.